Welcome to chapter 4 of the Creating a Lighting Fixture GETF video series. Most lights now include some form of color or FX wheel, in many cases both. So let's take a look at how these wheels are set up and defined in a GTTF. As with the previous chapters, you can jump to the specific subjects with the display timestamps. Define the physical and virtual wheels used to alter the fixture's light beam. A variety of different effects can be described, such as colors, gogos, and prisms. In general terms, wheels are defined by the type of slots they contain. Like elsewhere in the builder, wheels use a parent-child structure, with the parent object being the wheel and the slots being the children. Each wheel has to have a name, and then you can set up the individual slots based on what each slot is. The order of the slots top to bottom defines the slot location on the wheel. Set up a color slot by individually defining its color, or by linking it to a filter definition from the physical description page. Import an image of a Gobo as a PNG file to define Gobo slots. Gobo images need to follow a couple of rules. This image helps to explain them. The image area background, area 1, represents the Gobo holder and has to be fully transparent with an alpha value of 0. In the main section of the Gobo, area 2, pure black, is opaque, and pure white is transparent. Lastly, for color Gobos, area 3, an RGB approximation is used. It's essential when preparing Gobo images that you pay particular attention to the transitions on the edges of the Gobo image. More details on transitions can be found on the GDTF help pages, in the Preparing PNG Assets section. Describe prisms by defining the number orientation of their facets. Animation slots are defined by both a PNG image of the animation wheel and by using the animation wheel field to describe its behavior. There are a couple of basic rules to remember. It doesn't matter if a wheel is virtual or physical, they are all defined the same way. Wheel slots are linked to channel sets, based on the order of the slot within the wheel, just like in the real world. If a wheel has a prism, then it must have at least one child named Prism Facet. Animation wheels behave similarly, requiring at least one child named Animation Wheel. Let's take a look at how this works, starting with setting up a traditional color wheel. First, hit Add Wheel to create a new wheel parent object. Click on the icon to name the wheel. We'll call it color 1 in this case. Slot 1 will be automatically created. Name it open, since normally the first slot is open white or no color. Use add slot to add the next slot in the wheel. This has to be in the same order as the fixture uses in the real world. Name it red for this example. Now you can define the color, either by using the color picker to individually define the slot's color, or by using the filter field to select a previously created filter from the filter section of the physical descriptions page. Repeat this process for each slot in the wheel. Another possible type of color wheel is a virtual color wheel. This works in the exact same fashion as a physical wheel. Each slot defines either a color macro function or an individual color setting in the fixture's RGB or CMY mixing system. Again, the order of the slots in the wheel defines how you will later link the slot to a specific channel set. Setting up Gobo wheels uses the same basic workflow. Again, start by using Add Wheel to create the top level wheel object and name it Gobo 1. As before, the first slot will likely be an empty or open slot, so name the slot Open. Use Add Slot to create the second slot. Name the slot based on either the Gobo it contains or the name from the fixtures manual. Click on the icon at the right hand side of the Gobo field. This enables you to select a PNG image file to define the shape of the Gobo. Notice that the preview window now displays the chosen Gobo. Repeat this for each slot of the wheel. Creating a new prism wheel works slightly differently. As before, add a new wheel and name it, and then name the first slot. Now to add our first actual prism slot. Name it, and it's time to define the prism facets. Using either the Add Multiple Facets or Add Entry buttons at the lower right-hand corner of the Prism Facets section. Most prisms have multiple facets, so let's start with the Add Multiple Facets button. 
For this example, the prism will have four facets. Position shift determines the offset distance between the center point of the original beam and that of the beams altered by the prism. And it's defined based on the beam's unaltered radius at a given point. So for example, if a value of two is entered, each of the facet centers will be offset by two times the original beam's radius which will result in each facet touching but not overlapping with the edge of the original beam, like in this example. Here you can set up and edit the configuration for each facet of the prism using a 2D transform matrix. Although the matrix has nine fields, only the first six are needed. The preview pane displays the facets as squares or as circles when the toggle is used. The active facet is highlighted, the other facets display their number, but the geometry is grayed out. The red and green lines in the preview facets show the orientation of the projected beam. In the majority of cases, these should be using the exact same orientation in all facets, as this is how most fixtures behave in the real world. The buttons at the bottom of the dialog provide a quick way to change the rotation and position of the facets or to reset them back to the original values. Like prisms, Animation wheels require a slightly different workflow. As with all wheels, start with adding a new wheel and naming it. The first slot should be named open or something similar as per usual. Add a new slot and upload a PNG image of the animation wheel into the slot. In addition to the image, each animation wheel also needs to define how the animation wheel interacts with the beam of the fixture. To do this, click in the field once an image file has been added. Tick the Enable Animation Wheel checkbox in the dialog and turn on the Show Gobo option. Each slot uses a spline defined by three points to describe a path showing which part of the animation wheel will affect the beam of the fixture. The radius is based on the beam of the fixture and is used to define how much of the animation wheel will be acting on the beam at a given point on the animation path previously defined. After configuring the fixture's wheels, it's time to set up the DMX modes and the channel sets used to define how a fixture's attributes will respond to a lighting console. The next chapter will take an in-depth look at the DMX page, how to set up channel sets and the related parts of the GDTF.